Hi, my name is Philip King. Welcome to this tutorial series on writing a WordPress plugin. Since each of the tutorials in this series builds on each other, I recommend you progress through the tutorials in the order they are presented. All of the code for these video tutorials will be shown in the videos, but obviously you cannot copy the code using cut and paste from a video. So a text version of the code, along with articles to accompany the video series, is available on my website. The link is shown below. This lesson is part of the series covering the WordPress administration menus and options pages. In previous lessons we introduced plugins, built a basic working plugin template file structure, created a simple plugin class for our plugin, and started the demonstration plugin text to hyperlink. In this series of lessons, we'll cover the writing of WordPress administration menus, panels and pages. These lessons will also expand upon the text to hyperlink lesson we covered earlier, by providing an admin menu, a simple options page, and the ability to save data to the WordPress database. As a plugin or theme author, you will usually need to provide a method for your users to modify the plugin or theme settings. Asking your users, whose experience of PHP and CSS might be nil, to modify the PHP or CSS code should not even be considered. Even as a programmer, having to delve into source code every time parameters have to be changed is not a good idea. If your users need to interact with your plugin, an administration menu and options page needs to be provided. It's much more user-friendly and complements your plugin or theme. One of the first considerations when constructing your administration page is where to store the data. There would be little point having an admin page if the data could not be stored and retrieved but needed re-entering upon every visit. Luckily, the developers of WordPress have an easy solution to this problem with options. For the moment, just accept the fact that the method we will be using works. I will explain options and database storage in more detail in a later lesson of this series. For now, all you have to do is follow the steps necessary to store your admin variables in the WordPress database. Administration menu page requirements. To add an administration menu to your plugin, you must do three things. One, create a function that contains the menu building code. Two, register the above function using the admin menu action hook. Three, Create the HTML code for the page to be displayed when the menu item is clicked. The first two steps are exactly the same as any other plugin. The third step, creating the HTML output, is usually the step I find the hardest. Simplicity and usability can take a lot of effort. Administration menu page construction. When constructing the admin page, you also need to follow three simple steps. 1. Retrieve submitted data, if any, from the database. 2. Check to see if any form data has been submitted. 3. Display the updated admin page options. One thing to bear in mind at this stage, we will not be including localization in our examples to keep things simple. In reality, I would advise including localization in order to let WordPress translate your plugin. Remember, WordPress is international and including localization could significantly improve the uptake of your plugin or theme. We'll cover localization in another lesson. Determining the location of your menu. When creating a new menu, you must first decide at what layer level your menu should reside in the WordPress dashboard menu structure. You have two choices. Choice 1. A top level menu item. This displays as a new section in the dashboard administration menu and contains sublevel menu items. Choice 2. A sublevel menu item. These menu items are members of an existing menu, such as posts, pages, plugins, tools, settings, and of course your own user defined. It is recommended you only use a top level menu if your requirement does not fit neatly into one of the standard WordPress categories, or your new feature is unique and requires many screens to accomplish its task a membership site, an accounting application, conference management, etc. etc. In general, you'll really just need to decide in which top level menu to place your sub level menu item. For example, a backup plugin 
would probably be added as a submenu item to the tools top level menu. Menu Location Guide WordPress suggests the following guide for determining the correct location for your menu items. The Dashboard The only top level menus which should be placed on the dashboard are those central to the operation of your site, an application for example. The menu structure should contain everything which relates to the application, including update options. The post menu should contain tools for writing posts which are time sensitive. The media menu should contain tools for updating and managing your pictures, videos and audio. The links menu should contain tools for managing references to other blogs and sites of interest. The pages menu should contain tools for writing your static content pages. The comments menu should contain tools for the control and regulation of readers and responses to posts. The appearance menu should contain tools for the manipulation of themes, style files such as cascading style sheets, sidebars, etc. The plugins menu should contain controls for dealing with plugin management. It should not contain configuration options for the plugin itself. The users menu should contain controls for the user management. The tools menu should manage the export, import and backup of blog data. In other words, the maintenance of your blog. The settings menu should contain tools for displaying options that only administrators should view or modify. OK, with the previous information in mind, let's see how we tell WordPress about our menus and options pages. Top level menu items. To create a top level menu, you will use the add menu page function. This function creates a new top level menu section in the dashboard admin menu sidebar. It also registers a hoop to call back your named function. Your named function should output the options page content when the linked menu page is requested. The parameter values for the add menu page function are as follows. The page title string is the text displayed in the title tag of the menu page. The menu title string is the screen name of the menu item. The capability string is the user authentication access control requirement for this menu item. There are about 30 capabilities in WordPress. The best place to find out more about this requirement is the WordPress codex. You should generally use the manage options capability here as the user won't be able to save options without it. The menu slug string is the unique name required to refer to this menu item. The function string or array if you're using a plugin class like us is the name of the function which will display the option page content for the menu item. It's important to note that the function which is hooked in to handle the output of the page must check that the user has a required capability. That is they have the required access level. The optional URL string is the URL for the icon to be used for this menu. Although you can use your own icons, I would recommend simply using the default. The optional position integer is the position in the menu order this item should appear. The default is at the bottom of the menu structure. I would recommend not using this feature because if two menu items use the same position attribute, one of the items may be overwritten so that only one item displays. The potential complexity involved here is simply not worth the effort. In this example, the add action function is using the admin menu hook to register my custom menu function. This function uses the add menu page function to create a top level menu which calls the function my custom menu page to open the associated page. Take note of how the my custom page function immediately checks user permissions before doing anything else. This check should be done on every menu page you create. Sub level menu items. With your top level menu chosen, you are ready to define sub level menu items using the add submenu page function. Just add the sub level menu items in the order you want them displayed. The parameter values for the add submenu page function are as follows. The parent slug string is the slug name for the parent menu 
or the file name of a standard WordPress admin page. I'm not going to read them all out, but the following are examples of standard calls using a standard WordPress admin page. The remainder of the parameters are exactly the same as those of the top level menu parameters. In this sub level menu example, the add action function is used in the admin menu hook to register my custom submenu page function. This function uses the add submenu page function to create a sub level menu in the top level tools menu. This calls the custom submenu page function to open the associated page. Once again take note of how the my custom submenu page function immediately checks any permissions before doing anything else. Wrapper functions. To make life a little easier, and since most sub-level menus belong under the settings, tools or appearance menus, WordPress supplies wrapper functions that make adding sub-level menu items to those top-level menus less complicated. You may notice that some of the function names don't match the admin user interface. This is simply because WordPress has changed over time. Well. That's all for this tutorial introducing top level and sub level admin menus. See you in the next lessons where we will write some code using our plugin class to demonstrate what we've covered here.